happens is every generation or so is, you know, some of these artists like Lead Belly are sort of, you know, forgotten. And certain people discover them, you know, certain artists start playing um, Lead Belly music. You know, this happened over the years. You know, there was a, a period like in the 50s where a lot of folk musicians, you know, the Weavers starting it, all started playing tons of Lead Belly stuff. And there was a group that... You know, they did the, the, the song Cotton Fields. When I was a little baby, my mother rocked me in the cradle. And I'm old, old cotton fields at home. Into the 60s, other people like Van Morrison and other people started playing a lot of his songs and got known to rock audiences. And then, you know, the mainstream kind of loses track of him again. I think you got a situation in, I think, the late 1980s where Nirvana covers his song Black Girl and calls it Where Did You Sleep Last Night? Black girl, black girl, don't lie to me. Tell me where did you sleep last night? And, uh, you know, because of the popularity of Kurt Cobain and that band, they did it on a show called um, and Unplugged on MTV. You know, all of a sudden, so the next generation of people were all, you know, excited about Lead Billy again, all these rockers, you know. So every so often, you know, you get, like, uh, you know, people doing it. So I think it's important every so often just to kind of, like, do a project like this so you, you can, you know, talk about some of these people that shouldn't be forgotten that are really kind of iconic musicians, you know, in the history of our, our American music. I think a fun part of doing these projects are the liner notes to go back and try to like take each one of those songs as a case study and go back and try to find out where did this come from? Did, you know, did this come from somewhere before Lead Billy? And if so, where? And where might he have heard this or how might he have picked this up? Um, there was a, a song that he got from prison. Many years later, people went down and recorded prisoners in the 1960s, and they were still singing this song. Um, it was a song called Black Betty. Oh, Black Betty, bam, ba, lam. Oh, Black Betty, bam, ba, lam. Black Betty, Black Betty, bam, ba, lam. And the song was about it was a, about a train, was a train that ran between the various prisons. And if a prisoner was like sometimes transferred to a worse prison, it happened to Lead Belly. You know, if you acted up, they put you, they sent you to a harder core of prison, or you know, maybe sent you somewhere else. But it was, it was going back and forth between. Black Betty went between the prisons, and they had a song called "Old oh Black Betty Sham the Lamb." And the Sham the Lamb was like they were actually working on with axes, cutting during the day. They'd sing this as they worked, right? Well, it became a rock song by a group named Ram Jam. Later on, there was actually a sort of a disco version of by Tom Jones, where these girls were all singing in the background, shaking, and all that. And it's a completely disassociated from the prison song. So, so and, you know, I, I've heard Black Betty at, at like sporting events, like baseball games. You know, like during between the innings and stuff, people were all singing and dancing about. But you, they, they, nobody has any idea it's a prison song. So all these people are, you know, if you're listening to this stuff on like, you know, just Ram Jam, Black Betty on your iPod, you have no idea unless somebody actually is telling you the story. And so liner notes are a way to, you know, to go in and say, yeah, I had this experience in the last 30 years working with this music and getting to know these songs and wondering what they were. And this is what I found out. And this is what I'll share with you. I 